So now, uh, please welcome our next speaker, uh, Taryn Rye. Taryn. Well, completely different uh, from what Mariana, uh, where Mariana comes from. I come from a country with the lowest per capita consumption of magazines. <laughs> but hopefully, with the number of people we are in India, hopefully the one with the maximum potential. We have been hearing since the morning, in fact, since the past many years now, about how exciting these times are. There couldn't be a better time for magazines. There are so many opportunities. We are going beyond just circulation and ad revenue. Uh, we are reaching out to the communities in very different ways. Of course, there are challenges. But I think along with the challenges uh, come the humongous uh, number of opportunities. And no, I am not 54, but I am still loving and enjoying every moment of uh, these times. Not yet 54. 54 is Femina. We, we launched our first edition uh, way back in 1959. I think it's very creditable considering that uh, India got its independence uh, only a few years earlier. So in a young country to launch a women's magazine in English and to still be around after 54 years is quite an achievement. And you can imagine um, for all these years we have loved print and we have loved print ardently. Uh, every, every two weeks, uh, we come out with an issue of uh, Femina. We also have Femina in, um, in other languages. Uh, so in all, there are 52 issues of Femina. 300 pages is a, is a normal issue. And we actually chew up and consume lots of paper. It's no surprise then that uh, Femina is India's uh, largest women's magazine today. Over the years, uh, Femina has celebrated change. Uh, Femina has been a mirror to the changing Indian woman and has also been, been a beacon to her. Uh, we have, uh, in a sense, chronicled the development of the Indian woman and, and we have tried to stay relevant. And the reason we have stayed relevant is because we have always reinvented ourselves. We have never taken our legacy for granted. Uh, if you start taking your legacy and heritage for granted, it can very easily become baggage. We have tried to make sure that the legacy and the heritage we have uh, trans translates into equity rather than baggage. We have changed, but then suddenly change became very dramatic. I have been in the magazine industry only five years, and when I joined in 2008, I was uh, at a disadvantage because everyone in my company, in the industry, everyone knew much more than I did. Then the iPad got launched and everything was new for everyone. Uh, the table stakes have suddenly changed. And I think the changes that have, have uh, taken place since have really been very, very dramatic. Uh, India is, uh, is in the midst of uh, a huge amount of uh, politics uh, leading up to the election year, which is next year. And recently, the incumbent government announced something called right to food, which basically meant that uh, hunger should actually be eliminated and everyone in India constitutionally, legally, should have right not to be hungry. And they identified 67% of India where they felt that food security is required and hugely subsidized food grain is required for these people. This number was 800 million. The irony is that the number of mobile connections in India is 900 million. So it just shows you how the pace of technology has changed and how India and developing countries are adopting it. As far as the internet is concerned, India is today the third largest population of people connected on the internet, third largest after only uh, China and the US. So we said, yes, you know, we love print and uh, uh, print gets us the revenue, but what about digital? 
Well, digital, we are still, the jury is out, how we make money out of digital, how we uh, make sure that the two or three percent contribution to revenue becomes 10 percent and more. But one thing you, you definitely uh, will have to agree to is the fact of brand reach. Today, thanks to digital, thanks to technology, thanks to social media, the brand reach has really increased tremendously. And what we decided was that we should use social media uh, to produce India's first crowdsourced issue. Mariana talked about uh, reader engagement, but that was not the only reason why we wanted to uh, produce this crowdsourced issue. Very important for us was also participative marketing and the PR buzz that we managed to, to create around the fact that a, a five decade old magazine is the first one to come out with a, a crowdsourced issue using social media, using new technology. And I was talking to our editor and she made a very valid point. And she said, you know, at the end of the exercise, the bonus was much better, much deeper reader understanding and the entire edit team was actually quite surprised as to where their readers had moved on to, how quickly the readers are changing, what they're writing about, what they're expecting, what their thoughts and, and feelings are. So that came as a bonus. The other very important thing for us was to be seen to be contemporary. It's not easy being a 54-year-old homegrown Indian magazine brand when you have got launches of the Vogue's, the Harper's, uh, the Elves, the Marie Claire's, and we ourselves launched Grazia from our company. It's not easy to still stay contemporary because the flash of the new is always very tempting. And we have always believed that yes, we have to up our game, you have to change our looks, you have to, to fight at the newsstands with these, uh, the new magazines, but what you do is much more important. And when you advertise what you are doing, rather than just advertise what you are saying, it makes for a, a much more of a compelling uh, persuasive argument. And that's what we did. By using social media to produce India's first crowdsource issue, we tried to demonstrate that we were contemporary and we advertised the same. But how did it all start? We first wanted to check uh, what kind of response are we going to get Mariana again talked about statistics as to how many people actually uh, contribute and we were not even sure whether we will like, actually get an issue together. So just to test waters and to see whether our readers are interested in writing, uh, we, we set up uh, some kind of a stimulus and this was the stimulus that we set up. Mistakes men make. No wonder then that the response was fantastic. I am too scared to, to look at, look at the, the results of these, all these tweets that are floating around. But it certainly encouraged us to say, yes, uh, not only that they want to, want to write, but they, they are very, very keen to write. As part of our marketing effort, which is, not, which is beyond just reader engagement, was starting with a logo unit. Uh, I come from an advertising background and I know these handles are very important. So for us, Femina Made By You became an integral part of the entire exercise. So it was not just about uh, getting to the readers and asking them to contribute, but actually created into a marketing exercise. Along with marketing comes a compelling proposition. And the compelling proposition was very simple. If you've got a story, we have got the space. And we actually used all the media available to us to just put out one simple message if you've got the story, we have got the space. Whether it was on Facebook, even advertising in magazines and newspapers, whether it was taking India's most expensive outdoor site in Mumbai to again talk about the same message of Femina made by you is asking for contributions. The chances are that a fraction of our audience actually would see this, this outdoor, but because it is a marketing exercise, a lot of our advertisers would see this outdoor as they passed, uh, passed by to their office. We also activated bloggers. We have a set of 100 bloggers who work quite closely with Femina, and we actually activated them and encouraged them to ask their readers to send in their contributions. 
again, we did something clever. Because it was all about participation and encouraging and inspiring, we set up a meter where on the Facebook, every half an hour, every hour, you had a, a record of how many people have sent in the entries. And we realized that this is uh, one single thing that actually encouraged more and more people to contribute. Finally, the result, we managed to reach out to five million of the women who were reading Femina or their friends. We had 7,000 contributions across 21 cities. And finally, out of these 7,000 contributors, we selected 60 and published them in the magazine. We had inspirational stories, like the, the first woman driver of, um, of the metro in New Delhi. And we had some explicit stories, too. It was a tough job to curate out of the, the number of stories. But then again, as we were discussing earlier, the editor has to play the role of the curator and of selection of which are the stories that go in. We had our own version of uh, getting everyone involved in the making of the, of the magazine. And this was through Google Hangouts. Out of the 60 contributors, more than 30 managed to join in and give their views on designing the magazine. So we did not have an elaborate uh, uh, system of actually uh, progressing each and every page. But we had the, these edit meets along with the entire edit team to discuss what the, the layouts should be and which are the stories and how they should be uh, included. Well, the issue was closed, and we had uh, a very, very attractive issue. We also remembered to salute the, the rest of the contributors who could not be published in the magazine. And this is where participative marketing took another turn. The authors to the contributors, so 60, 7,000, and 7,000 plus their friends became the advocates. So even the marketing got an entire life of their own because the people who were engaged with us were the people who are marketing for us now. These are some of the Facebook posts that, that went up. And there are a lot of people who picked these up and, and in themselves pushed, pushed it along. And before we knew, uh, we, had a, we were trending, I think, on Twitter for a while just because of uh, so many people wa wanting to and interested in knowing when the issue is going to be coming out. This is a part of social media. At the end of it, we had huge statistics in terms of the number of uh, contacts that we had, the brand had made. And to me, again, we keep forgetting that digital and technology and social media can be used to our advantage, at least on the marketing and the, and the brand reach front. We didn't leave it uh, just there. We also created India's first, possibly, crowdsourced ad. We, uh, this was the graphic alphabet ad. We asked the contributors to actually send in uh, uh, key, key letters from their, uh, their names, and we put it all together uh, to create the India's first crowdsourced ad. We again tried uh, another first, which was pre-booking the magazine. Just creating a, a sense of uh, maybe an artificial scarcity, books do it. We said, why not a magazine? So another first was we did a campaign asking people to pre-book the magazine. And also booking ads. Uh, we used uh, advertising to reach uh, advertisers in some of the leading magazines of the country, industry magazines. I get a point for that, Rupert. So, and and we, we actually wanted to create uh, a demand and a, and a sense that this is going to be a sellout issue. And the response from advertisers was indeed quite exceptional. And of course, uh, a lot of PR buzz. India's first always rings a bell, and uh, it gets talked about. And that's the free publicity we, we got. Uh, not just uh, in India, but the PR buzzed reached the FIPP organization and Chris, and here we are in Rome presenting to a much larger audience. Uh, so they, if you do new things, try new experiments, uh, they are attendant bonuses. And finally, uh, uh, this kind of epitomizes it, it for me. Uh, this is something that we wanted. 
much, much beyond just reader engagement, a sense of excitement, uh, a sense, sense of sharing, a sense of sharing with other people. Just a simple thing, hey, 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 can you spot me there on the cover of Femina? Can you imagine me there, super excited? And there were so many people like, like this girl who were tweeting, who were talking about it, and much beyond getting reader engagement, we actually had so many advocates pushing the brand Femina and making sure that we make good money from it. Where do we go from here? Uh, the success of, uh, of Femina's crowdsourced issue has encouraged all our editors, and we publish a lot of magazines from Filmfare and Grazia and Hello to all the way to uh, Lonely Planet and Top Gear. And all of them are trying their own versions. It doesn't have to be a fully crowdsourced issue, but they are trying their own versions of following the same format of getting readers involved, creating a marketing opportunity for their brands and the attendant PR buzz. And what of Femina? Uh, well, we know our readers like to write, and so therefore we are now developing a new platform for them, which is, uh, which is working title, it's called Femina Fast Fiction, and this is encouraging them to write stories on the web, on the mobile, and even on Twitter. And we are very excited about this, and we feel that uh, once we get, as Femina as a brand, we cover fiction in the magazine, and if we can get people to, to write in with their story and create a new platform for them, uh, this would be a, a beginning of uh, uh, the next crowdsourced uh, revenue, possibly a revenue uh, opportunity, but certainly a marketing opportunity. Thank you very much.